dynamic blessings to all of you. And blessing is uh, the presence that's never an absence, beaming its life to us for a greater expression of life itself. So I'm welcoming you to this uh, IG Live on this particular Wednesday, not to have a guest, but just to have a moment, uh, a prayerful moment, a meditation moment, a manifestation moment for each and every one of us, for the world and the planet we want to live on, and for the dissolution of fear and hate that seems to run rampant around this time of election cycles. The, um, so we're going to wait a couple of moments, and then I will begin a little brief teaching, not much, because we want to spend the, uh, the time we have together really in the frequency of manifestation, in the frequency of prayer, in the frequency of meditation. This is, this is our moment. Now, it's, today is 11-11, uh, 2020, and this particular uh, configuration of numbers hasn't existed since 1919. And um, in certain teachings, this particular day of 1111 uh, carries the frequency of great power to manifest. So um, we're going to obviously do some manifestation work around at this moment. And in the mystical tradition, uh, the power to manifest always exists, period beyond time, beyond space, beyond numbers. But we can use this particular day, 1111, and pay close attention to what our soul is really asking for us. You know, true manifestation is actually uh, uh, true manifestation, not just mental manipulation, but true manifestation is when our soul is evolving and our spirit is unfolding. In other words, it is possible to use mental laws to get the things that we want. And we can get those particular things that we want, but it may not be for the expansion of our soul. Just as individuals can become skilled in um, visualization and bringing things into visibility, doesn't necessarily mean that that individual has expanded their awareness of the presence or has embraced their particular soul calling. Just as an individual can develop the skill uh, to run really fast or to hit a fastball or to do certain things in life, but it doesn't necessarily mean uh, that their character has evolved, it doesn't necessarily mean that the evolution of their soul has occurred and that the skill of kindness and the skill of compassion, the skill of loving, the skill of generosity, the skill of divine intelligence flowing through one doesn't mean that they have increased because you develop a certain skill set. So true manifestation carries with it uh, the unfoldment of our soul. We, becoming, we are becoming more and never less than our true self. That's real manifestation. Things sometimes we call manifestation is simply uh, uh, mentally bringing things into visibility uh, that weren't there in your life at that particular period of time. And there's nothing wrong with that. But it ultimately leads us to the embracing the soul call, the, the calling of our soul. What do I mean by that? That means that you have incarnated on this particular planet, this particular time in history, and you have what is called um, time capsules within your being. Those time capsules are dreams, the dreams that you have about your life and about the world you want to live in. They serve as time capsules that wake you up. So, you know, as I've said over the years, if you want to, um, you're really uh, uh, waking up to the dream that's within you, you see, uh, in order for it to come forward. Now, the difficulty is we've been bamboozled um, by status quo, We've been bamboozled by societal dreams for us to walk in the status quo or to be a certain way in society. But beyond societal uh, uh, hypnotism, there is something that your soul has, that you have brought with you, that your society didn't give you, that uh, no one gave you, education or miseducation, religion or misreligion. Um, there's something about you that um, it wants to come forward, you see. And as I said earlier, you have time capsules that wake you up, and they are your dreams of you becoming more of who you are. 
That doesn't mean gaining a, a, the world according to some materialistic nightmare. You've heard the scriptural reference of, of some individuals have gained the world, but they've lost their soul, you see. You've come to gain the radical impulse of your soul's calling and have all of your needs met and be healthy and be happy and have harmonious, dynamic, loving relationships and allowing the giftedness and your talents to, to emerge in a very powerful and magnificent way, you see. And so we're going to um, wait a couple of moments for a few people to, to come on. And then we will um, go in, we'll set ourselves up in prayer, and we'll begin on this 11-11, the great day of manifestation, uh, to uh, embrace the dreams of our soul, to embrace our planet and the world we live in, that um, we can begin to see that which is in the highest and best of all concern to emerge, you see? and then call forth the manifestation of that without asking how to do it, but just setting it into law, the universal law, you see, setting it into universal law so that uh, it begins to manifest and it begins to compel us into right action. Now we need to come to an understanding before we go into prayer, of course, that hate is not a family value. And, I, and I've noticed with the polarization in an election cycle, people actually uh, denigrate their soul and go down to the level of hating someone who doesn't think the way that they think or see the world the way that they see it. They actually, uh, I actually looked into the hatosphere, sometimes called the internet or social media, and uh, people like calling each other demons and devils and all kinds of nasty things. And uh, hate is never a family value. And hate is never a spiritual principle. And hate is never uh, puts you in a position to manifest the world you want to live in. Never does, never does. And so you, we have to become strong enough uh, in our soul, in our spirit, to engage in dialogue that individuals, with individuals that see things differently from us so that we can find common ground and begin to work for a kind and just global society regardless of what's happening on the political scene. Because generally speaking throughout history, the political scene has not been in the vanguard of great change on the planet. It's always come through Renaissance moments via the citizens, uh, not necessarily through the political systems. So I don't, I don't put down the political systems, I don't uh, put down uh, voting or anything like that, but I, I'm always reminding people that great change and great renaissance moments actually comes about through the zeitgeist of citizens who have captured a vision, walked in that direction, and then the political system kind of bends itself towards the next iteration of the unfoldment of our soul. So we want to, if, we, if, we, if, any, if any of you have found yourself recoiling and uh, going into hate, because someone is not seeing the world that you have seen. You, you've been captured by your lower, the angels of your lower nature. And you don't want the angels of your lower nature, hate, rivalry, malice, greed, jealousy, envy, to run the gamut. In the scripture, uh, the four horsemen of the apocalypse are, are, are jealousy, envy, malice, and rivalry. That, and that, are the, that, that's the signal that we're doing a downward turn in our soul and rather than releasing the brilliance, the giftedness, the luminosity, the absolute beauty and the power that comes from having an intimate at one minute with pure spirit, regardless of whatever name you call great God of the universe, pure spirit, source, life itself, it doesn't matter what you call it, the idea is we have to call it forth as the activity, of our, the activity of our awareness. So we want to always embrace the angels of our higher nature. Skillful compassion, kindness, patience, forgiveness, and of course, love. Those are the angels of our higher nature. Peace is included in that. Harmony is included in that. So the higher nature angels are love and peace, compassion, and kindness and patience with the bedrock of forgiveness. The lower nature 
are, are the four horsemen of the apocalypse, which is envy and greed, rivalry and malice, hate. You know, uh, uh, if you don't know what those terms mean, jealousy uh, means that you want something that somebody else has. Envy is jealousy on steroids. It means you don't want the other person to have what they have. And then that leads to a rivalry and it leads to malice, which means you'll actually do something evil or harmful to someone else, another human being. So we want to embrace the angels of a higher nature and begin to allow that to be the activity of our awareness. And that where, that's where prayer comes in, affirmative prayer, that's where meditation comes in, that's where visioning comes in, so that you can actually begin to see whether you've slipped into the lower nature or you're being elevated into your higher nature. So today on 1111, we want to go into a, a moment of prayer and uh, I'm going to walk us through a meditative moment for our individual lives, the lives of our nation, the life of our nation, and the life of the world and the life of our planet. Now, just before I start, I need to tell you there's a difference between the planet and the world. They're not the same thing. The, 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 the planet is Mother Earth, it's Gaia. It's a living entities of rivers and lakes and, and rainforest and oceans and mountains and deserts and earth. And, and, it, and it's alive, earth is alive, Mother Earth is alive. That's the earth, we're all astronauts on planet Earth. And then there's the world. The world is a configuration of agreed upon thoughts, opinions, points of view, positionalities, perceptions, you see? And so individuals can be on the same spot on the planet, but be in two different worlds. So we want to continue to transcend the world as it appears to be, and begin to come into the world of infinite potential that lies within every single being and create a dynamic where the potential of every being rises up and expresses so that on this planet, we create a world that works for the highest and best within every being on the planet, all species, all living beings, you see. And, and, and that is to catch a vision of that possibility. So we love Mother Earth. We love and honor the oceans and the rivers and the lakes. We love the rainforest. We love the, uh, the Black Hills. We love the oases in the deserts. We love the deserts. We love all of that because most of our medicines, real medicines, come from the rainforest, you see. So we don't want to destroy it. And we don't want to destroy the rivers, even though the earth is three-fourths water. It's polluted with plastics and all manner of human waste. So we want to take stewardship and responsibility for that. That takes love, stewardship, caring. You see, love, stewardship, and caring. So I'm going to stop right there because I want us to do some inner work for a few moments. I'm not gonna keep you long, just long enough to invite you to put your feet firmly on the ground unless you're in the full lotus position uh, in, your, in your yoga asana. If you're not, put your feet on the ground, close the outer eye, tap the space between your eyebrows so there's an activation of seeing without eyes seeing with consciousness. Close your eyes with me. Take a deep breath. Release. And relax into this moment. I'm, I'm going to begin with a moment of prayer as I stand in great gratitude and thanksgiving and dynamic appreciation for life itself. Life that is always being itself, never compromising itself, called by many names, the God Presence, the Love Presence, Great God of the Universe, Mother, Father, God, Infinite Spirit, Lord God Almighty, the Presence that is never an absence. I am so grateful that I am one with this life. I'm so grateful that all of us are one with life, that we're never separate from the divine. Our life is an emanation of the divine. So from this sense of oneness, I declare and decree by the power of the word that I am evoking right here and right now, that everyone that is in the sound of my voice right now is blessed exceedingly well. 
that uh, this word is a law unto itself that only knows its own unfolding. And I speak it with the authority of one knowing that all that there really is is God and everything that really is is a manifestation of the only thing that is, which is the presence that is never an absence. This word is law. I speak it for each of us now that we may rise up with a great awareness of a dynamic sense of peace that passes human understanding. A dynamic sense of love ec uh, moving through our heart space. A, di a dynamic sense of harmony and wellness and well-being and health and vitality and vigor. A dynamic sense of harmonizing prosperity and abundance and affluence uh, that does not come from manipulation, but that comes from the activity of our awareness accepting that we're living, moving, and having our beingness in a field of abundance. As the Bhagavad Gita reminds us, you can take abundance or from abundance, but abundance still remains. You cannot exhaust abundance. It doesn't run out. It's everywhere. Just as energy is never created or destroyed, it's everywhere. So we now, I speak the word now that all of us become skillful in our receptivity and our availability to the abundance of the cosmos. We do not fall prey to the hypnotism of the world that would say that there's lack and limitation. No, we break free from that matrix and come into the quantum field and the ever-expanding awareness of the presence of God that we are full to overflowing with more good than we could possibly imagine. And it now begins to express through us in our thought, our word, and our actions that all of our needs might be met with an ease and a grace and a dignity. So I'm calling forth divine health for each and every one of us. I'm calling forth the vibration of all needs met. I'm calling forth the activity of our gifts and talents being activated because it is our gifts that frees us and paves the way for prosperity. I call forth the entrepreneurial spirit, the resourceful spirit, the innovative spirit that is within us that during these particular times in human history where society is closing down, our innovative spirit, our resourceful spirit, our entrepreneurial spirit rises up. That we make ways out of no ways. Beyond a governmental help, which we will accept. But beyond that, we go directly to the source of all creation in our own being and our resourcefulness and innovativeness and absolute entrepreneurial spirit is activated. And we, in our own consciousness right now, we accept that all of our needs met and then we watch it manifest with the grace a power and a dignity. I want you with your eyes closed right now to see your life, see yourself living a fruitful, productive, loving, generous, creative life. See what that feels like right now. This is the day of manifestation. See yourself living fruitful. Multiply and be fruitful. Multiply the consciousness of the all good and be fruitful. Feel it in your being. See it in your mind's eye and in your heart. All of your needs met. See it. Feel it in your being. If you can feel it, you can heal it. Feel. Your needs are met right now. Feel the health radiating through your body temple right now. Where there's any particular issue, shine the light of your awareness on those particular issues of your body temple right now and invite a dynamic healing right now. A healing is a revelation of the wholeness that's already there. Just covered up and obscured by thoughts and damage and abuse and hurt. Let's uncover the wholeness right now. This is the word that I'm speaking. It's uncovering the intrinsic wholeness of our own being right now. As you accept that for yourself, embrace this nation, otherwise known as the United States of America. See it united now. Doesn't necessarily mean we're all in agreement. It means we're in alignment with the fundamental harmony of the universe. We may have different ways of thinking how that should happen, but we're not into the how right now. We're into the what united state of consciousness, United State of America, feel the united part. And begin to re-enchant your imagination 
to see the great possibility of this nation rising up and exercising the true meaning of its incarnation. Not merely the pursuit of happiness for all, but the realization of happiness and joy and peace and prosperity and intelligence and love for all. All, not just some, all. Not just individuals who look like us, but individuals everywhere. See the true meaning of how God sees the world. We expand our perception beyond our borders and we embrace the entire planet, all beings, all cultures, all colors of skin, every country embrace everyone and we see a kind, we have to see it, we have to see, we have to describe it. Remember what the law is, the law is not you shall see what you shall describe what you see. The law is you shall see what you describe. Inwardly catch a description of a globe, a planet, a kind and just global society that works for the highest and best within us all. If you can't see it, feel it. If you can't feel it, imagine it. So we go from this planet of everyone's needs being met, which is possible in the quantum field, to our own country, whatever country you're tuning in from, all needs met, love is the ethic, hate is not a val family value, nor is it in principle with the fundamental harmony of the universe. We let go of judgment, we let go of being judgy, and we judge righteous judgment which is the presence of God is everywhere. And then we come back to our individual lives. Joy and happiness, all needs met, cascading out of no thing, becoming the very somethingness of our existence. We feel it in our bones. So from our individual life to the life of our neighborhood, our city, our province, our state, our nation, we give a great blessing. And that blessing cascades all around the globe. Let there be peace. Let there be joy. Let there be abundance. Let there be love. Let there be love. Let there be love. Let there be love within our own hearts and souls right now. We give thanks for this. Sit with me for just a few seconds. from this deep sense of solitude, silence and quietude and connection to the presence that's never in absence. We give thanks that as this word is being released, it cannot and will not return void. It returns fulfilled thereof. It fulfills itself and it fulfills itself by means of us. It operates through us as us, and we become the living instruments, the divine fiats of great and mighty transformation at this time in human history. We become the tip of the spear of a global renaissance of peace and love and abundance. And it's happening now. When? Now. When I say when, feel the word now emerge through you. When, 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 right now, this is happening. I give thanks for this. On this 11, 11, we call forth the power of manifestation that our lives glorify brilliance, intelligence, abundance, peace, love, joy. Our lives glorify this. We're willing to live at this level.
and we allow it to be so. And so it is. Amen. Thank you for joining me today for this moment of just stopping, pulling out of the world, so to speak, and coming into a glorious possibility, the poss infinite possibilities that lie within us, to touch those possibilities and be the instruments for those possibilities to manifest in your life individually, the life of our nation and the life of all beings on the planet. We're tapping into the celebration that's happening at a cosmic level and desiring to localize that cosmic celebration in and as our very life. Blessings to you. Of course, I invite you to be with us on our Facebook page. Many of you were on there today for the 8 o'clock prayer time and the 12 noon meditation time. And I invite you to choose one or two of the services on Sunday, 6.45 a.m., meditation, the way of meditation, and then 8.30 meditation, 9 o'clock service, 11 a.m. meditation, 9, 11.30 uh, celebration service, Pacific time, of course. This particular Sunday is a very special Sunday for us because I'll be speaking along with some of our teenagers because it's our annual Youth Sunday where they get to step and speak about their learning of these spiritual principles and how it applies to their life. I never say the youth or the teens or the young people are the next generation. I teach that they are the now generation because their minds haven't been sullied yet by earthly experience. So we want to glean the freshness and the vision of how, what they see as possibility. I'll see you Sunday. Have a bright day. You may want to share this particular link with some of your friends particularly since it is 11-11, a great time to manifest and wake up to your dreams, the visions of your heart and soul, and the sacred calling of your soul. <laughs> There's more and more to you than meets the eye, and there is so much brilliance in you. Keep rising. Keep rising. Keep rising. If you want another awesome video in our Black Excellence series, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there.